it is Monday, November 1st, 2010, and this is your Daily Reptile News. Now, I'd like to start off today just by telling everybody, if you don't like the stories for today or whatever, just uh, hang in there because we got an important one coming up. It's about to uh, lower the bar greatly on the endangered species, not only of my state of California, especially for my state of California, but for the rest of the world. If if what they want to do goes through the way it's going through, then it's going to lower the bar just all over the country, all over the world, and you know it's going to mean uh, it's bad. It's 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 real bad. So stay tuned. We're going to get to that story, but we got a few things to talk about first. Now, first of all, our first story is not necessarily directly related to reptiles, but it happened at a crocodile farm. So we're going to talk about it anyway. A uh, man apparently was tore apart and eaten by a few lions. Apparently, now we've talked about stuff like this, similar stuff like this before. Apparently, the man was climbing on the fence attempting to show a friend how big the lions were. And they don't go into detail what he was doing, but obviously he was trying to lure the lions uh, closer to the fence. Where apparently a very large male lion grabbed him off the fence and began to uh, maul him pretty badly. The friend ran for help, but by the time anybody got there, it was too late. The man was already dead. Now, they say that this man had only worked at the park for about a month now, and this is kind of a gloomy time for, for the park because this is the second time somebody's been killed by lions there. And now over to Australia, where apparently Hartley's Crocodile Adventures has received a, a big tourism award. Now, apparently this was uh, just one of many tourism awards that were were awarded to operators at a ceremony. Um, I'll put the whole article and the links down there so you can go there and read it and check it out. And apparently after a study had gone on in some of the world's largest protected areas, it was found that the areas that were protected were not necessarily the highest priority areas for conservation. And now we get to the story that we've all been waiting for. This is down in the uh, San Benito, uh, California. Where apparently residents and uh, state federal government officials and corporate leaders are really locking horns on a project that's going on down there. They apparently want to install a 5,000 acre solar farm down in the valley there. Now after going through this story, it, 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 it really, it kind of scares me because apparently from the, uh, you know, the view of us, the public, the, um, the government has really been pushing through uh, a lot of the, the permitting, the uh, environmental impact reports, they've really been pushing those through and they've been flawed and apparently there are several endangered, federally endangered species that live in the valley there that are going to be affected. One thing that really, really pisses me off about this and really makes me want to start writing letters is a quote from Greg Sweat, the president of the San Benito County Farm Bureau. He, he was quoted as saying, if the blunt-nosed leopard lizard, which is one of those federally endangered species, is a standard lizard, then he'll get out of the way. And, you know, if we've learned anything throughout uh, the years of screwing up everything, pretty much, then we know that these, these animals, they, they live in the valley there because that's, that's the only place they can live. I mean, it, they're not going to move up into the mountains when you put a farm, a, a solar farm or anything there. That they are not going to get out of the way. They're going to stay there, and due to the human encroachment and habitat loss, that species is now going to be in, um, extinct. It's going to be gone. And um, I, I, I don't see why the, the state and federal officials, including the uh, Department of Fish and Game here in California and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, I mean, this is, they're the ones that list these animals on these, these endangered lists. And if anybody should know, they should know that these animals are not going to get out of the way. They are going to die. And now Nancy Martin, uh, president of the San Benito County Econo Economic Development Department, basically puts it in uh, the theory of survival of the fittest, that they are not going to let a lizard or an owl win over people when it comes to the head-to-head -head battle, the people are going to win. Again, one of the most ignorant, horrible um, ideologies that I've ever heard, uh, you know, this is why we are where we are now, is because of theories like this. 
And now, of, of course, here's somebody at the at the federal level that, that is on our side, and that is Mike Westville, a Bureau of Land Management herpetologist, who, who says that what I just said, these animals will not move. If this is allowed to go forward, those animals will be lost. And the species in that area, uh, specifically the endangered ones, will not recover over this project. Now, the other good news and bad news about this is apparently the California Fish and Game Department, as well as the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, have to approve permits for this project to move forward. That's good because they're supposed to be in this business and hopefully you know they could put a stop to this. However, Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger, um, the governor, he apparently sent a note to the Obama administration asking them to expedite these permits quicker so the companies looking to get these permits can take advantage of the federal stimulus packages and stuff which end December 31st of this year. The California Department of Fish and Game as well as the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service permits can take several months to get if they approve them at all. Now SolarGen, the, uh, the company that's wanting to build this plant apparently says that, that they feel it's, it's not a big deal. They've set aside 23,000 acres outside of the valley for um, protected habitat for these animals, but you know, it, it's it's a good start. I, it's a, you know, 23,000 acres. They're spending a good chunk of money to try to conserve some habitat. However, they're missing the point. The animals are not going to move out of the valley. If they pick them up and move them out of the valley, they're going to die. It it it's it goes right back to the beginning. They're there because that's the suitable habitat for them to live in. Um, furthermore, the the solar power plant which is supposed to take up up to a third of the valley floor um that's just horrible i've been there uh, i i don't know if you've been there but that's a gorgeous place it's uh, scattered with with vineyards and cattle land a lot of ra ranches big and small great place to go snake hunting uh, down the dirt roads but i i could not imagine coming down into that valley and having a third of it just covered with solar panels. And SolarGen, just, just from the fact of them quoting that they think it would be beneficial for the endangered species there, tells me they haven't done their homework. Um, chances are, just like the rumors are, the environmental impact reports were skewed and pushed through without the proper scrutiny and um, it, it, you know, it's just it's a big mess, is what it is. It's a real big mess. And SolarGen apparently, on top of that, has also said that they understand the sacrifice of the ranchers in the area, and they understand the fact is they may have to go out of business. Now, Ron Garthwaite, a, a rancher down there in the valley, has said that you don't you don't just come in and destroy a community's way of life just to make a couple dollars. He believes that. This project going in the valley and being pushed through so fast is because of some sort of political or financial gain on the part of the local and federal government. I got to agree with him. I really do. I, I mean, I have. I was absolutely set back when I was researching this story, and a lot. You know, most of the time, projects like this take years to to get through all the red tape and the reports and the permitting and everything. And this one, it, it appears they're trying to push it through within months and you know so in short solar power facility good yes we just talked about one of these not too long ago going down in southern california where they were relocating some tortoises however they were relocating the tortoises to a suitable habitat um this though i i i think it's bad i think it's real bad the area that it's going in the animals that live there the reptiles that i found there um it, it's just it's not good. It makes me want to get in the car right now and go down there and photograph some of these these animals because I'm fairly confident that if this gets pushed through, I won't myself or any of you out there will never get the chance again to go photograph these animals. Now that being said, I'm going to put down in the links all the contact information for anybody all over the country, all over the world who wants to get a hold of any of the state or federal local regulatory officials to get your word through and have your opinion heard on this project. I've also started a Facebook group for the preservation of the valley there, so you got to go join that. Uh, you know, this is a point in time where people need to start coming together, similar with the snake ban, similar with anything else that affects what we do at people's way of life. Um, all those links are going to be down in the description. And, you know, I'm always the first one to preach, and I, I really hope a lot of people listen out there. 
I, I know this can be a pretty emotional sort of um, thing for a lot of people, but if you do contact any any local, state, federal officials on this matter, do so with respect. Um, if, when you tell them their mother's fat, they don't listen to you, and it makes us all look bad. So you can voice your concern, you, you can make your statements, you can, uh, you know, cite the facts, uh, but do it in a professional, adult, respectful manner, and it really helps all of us, and we all greatly appreciate it. And once again, so we could say thank you, so I can say thank you, when you contact these people, go post it to that group that I'm going to put the link down there for, and, you know, because, um, Every little letter, every word, and every single email is, uh, it counts, it really does. Hey guys, so I'm sitting here editing and it just occurred to me that I missed your question of the day, so we're going to go ahead and do that right now. What do you think about this whole uh, solar plant being put in in the valley down there? Um, do you think it's worth the risk to the species in the valley, especially the endangered species for the green technology? Or do you think it's a bunch of bullshit and they need to move it somewhere else where it's not going to have such a huge impact on the environment? Leave a text comment or a video response below. So that has been all your news for this Monday, November 1st, 2010. If you'd like to read any more of these stories, those links are right down below here in the description. And as always, if you're still watching, my name is Jason White. Now you know what's going on in the reptile world. Be good to each other. Feel their teeth, punctured your 